Alright, what is going on fellow gamers? Welcome back to another Pro Guides video. If you have been into Cash Cups lately, you may have seen some random name on the number one spot in the NA West region with 120 points, two cups in a row. This player is named Fluffy Dolphin 932. Oh god, the horror, it's so fluffy. <laughs> fluffy Dolphin 932 is actually a controller legend by the name of Wavy Jacob, who has been blowing up lately due to these absolutely insane performances in Cash Cups. My name is Cody, and today we'll be analyzing Wavy Jacobs, or should I say Fluffy Dolphins, gameplay and try to spot some of the tricks that he uses to top the leaderboards in the most dominant fashion we have ever seen. But real quick, before we get started, I've got a question for you. Are you looking to get better at Fortnite? If you are, make your way over to ProGuides.com, where we have exclusive courses from our pro members made by pros like Mongrel and Benji, along with meta updates. On top of all this, we also offer 24-7 on-demand coaching from some of the world's top players. If any of this amazing stuff interests you, you have got to check out ProGuides.com. Last thing before we get into this amazing video, let's do today's question of the day. Who do you think is the world's best controller player? There are quite a few, most notably Unknown, who really set the pace for controller players in competitive. But Wavy Jacob is also blowing up now, and other insane controller players are on the come up every single day, behind the scenes, grinding and practicing to one day become the best. Let us know who you think is the world's best controller player. I'm looking forward to reading your comments. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into this video and uncover some of Fluffy Dolphin's secrets. And guys, I just love that name. Alrighty, so to start everything off, Jacob lands in the middle of Weeping Woods at the main building. He's most likely practiced this drop a ton, just like other pros, so he gets the best glide into the building. This is by far the best building in Weeping, with four chests and a ton of floor loot. So he's basically guaranteeing himself some nice loot and the ability to push early. And since he has mastered his drop, his odds of a 50-50 fight are super low, and even if someone drops late into his building, he'll already have the loot to take them out nice and quickly. My dude is thinking ahead. We think another reason for Jacob to land here is because of the coolers, which store different fish items. These are still scattered around and can give him a nice health advantage in early fights. And it's no wonder why, as he manages to get a slurp fish from the second cooler, and would you look at that, also the third one, nice. It's always good if you can find a spot that has meta items like coolers, fishing spots, upgrade benches, since you can now side grade and the prices were lowered, and anything else. Speaking of upgrade benches, there's also an upgrade bench in Weeping Woods, and since they're so cheap right now, they're a super nice tool to have around your drop spot. So there he is, he's continuing to look around, hanging in the middle of Weeping. He finds a player running around, would you look at that? Mr. Fluffy Jacob plays on legacy settings, which basically means his crosshair will have a sort of lock-on effect on his opponents. Knowing this, he crouches and stays still for a second to reduce his bloom. And he does the classic L2 spam play to get some damage off on his opponent. Nice. This is a pretty textbook kill. Jacob's able to simply build up, go down, grab his opponent's wall, and end the fight from there. Some fights are like this, but the fact that he got the damage off first, using his keen awareness and aim assist, really helps him sort of take control in his fights. Jacob himself says that before any fight, it is a mental game. You have to sort of strike fear into your opponent and take the stronger position. By getting the first shots off and hitting his opponent hard, he wins the mental game pretty much immediately, which makes his opponent play a bit safer and letting him control the fight by playing offensively. Coming back to the upgrade bench subject, Jacob grabs enough material to upgrade his blue tactical shotgun into a purple one for only 150 of each material, which he'll be able to grab back in only a few minutes. With the reduced prices, upgrade benches are the meta and definitely worth using, especially from blue to purple. It almost seems like this was his biggest advantage, as throughout the entire tournament, he used his upgrade bench to get better loot. He was seriously ahead of the meta here, and was one of the first players to use this strategy. And clearly it is worth doing, as his loot is pretty much always insane. Oh, and would you look at that! Jacob spots another player running around and immediately gets the jump on him. Just like he always does with some absolutely stanky shots. Oh, smells, bro. Take out the trash, man. Bringing his opponent to just over 100 health before he even has time to react. From here, the opponent takes a silly 50-50 in the open and Jacob returns with some more shots. Pump, pump to the face. 
Ultimately, he jumps in his box to finish the kill. Jacob knew his opponent was already scared, and when people are scared, they don't think straight. So he was confident just jumping into that box and going hammer time. Can't touch this. Bam, 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 bam. Fluffy. Dolphin. Hey, hey. Also, it is important to notice the confidence that Jacob plays with. He knows he is better than his opponents and also has insane loot, mostly thanks to his great loot route and upgrade bench to back it up. He can approach fights knowing he has a giant advantage in them, which we really feel helps him in these cups. Also, check out that aggressive play style. Woo! That's gonna get you some wins, my friend. Weeping Woods is an amazing spot as players rotate in and out all the time, from places like Holly Hedges, Slurpy Swamp, Salty Springs, Misty Meadows, and so many more. The zone also pulls to Weeping pretty often, and the rotations aren't far even if they're bad, since it's relatively centered on the map. He can easily sneak around and surprise rotators and get easy kills left and right, up and down, every direction. Jacob's coming for you. Once again, a player pops up, and this time he's on the high ground. Instead of waiting to think or hesitating due to the risk of getting shot, Jacob confidently goes up and W keys that player. W keyed, bro. Nice try. This is also a good mental play, as most players tend to box up and stay on low ground, so even if he didn't get shots off immediately, this player already knows that Jacob is a really good player. This is a pretty clean play as Jacob grabs height and hops down onto his opponent's side, using sound cues to finish off the kill before they even know what hit him. Boom! Back to the lobby, GG's only! <laughs> Think about how confidently and fast he approaches these early and mid-game fights. Whether it's through a laser, building up quickly, or anything in between, he always establishes an advantage and scares his opponents before the actual fighting even properly starts. This mental aspect makes Jacob one of the most dominant players in the cups, and it definitely helps him win most of these fights. Also, since he ends these fights so quickly, usually in under 20 or 30 seconds, he can quickly continue and avoid getting third-partied all the time like most of us do. Oh, sick, man. I just got this sick kill, and now you're gonna come at me from behind. Oh, God. I should have ended it quicker. Like my boy, Wavy. All right. We're going to skip ahead a bit here, as you pretty much get the point. Almost all of his early and mid-game fights go just that way, so we'd basically just be watching him completely mop a bunch of players. Attention all Fortnite shoppers, there's a cleanup on every aisle. Some player in a giant brick base tries to attack him, but instead of pushing and risking his game, he avoids playing emotional and takes smarter fights instead, like the Middle Island. That fight against the based-up player was simply too risky and he'd be pushing from way below. Jacob continues onto the middle island and gets lasered pretty hard by a player with a purple scar. This is one of the rare situations where the opponent is actually the one who gets the early advantage, but he is quick to box up and heal, so it's all good. He hears the player going inside of the building and into the bathroom, so he heads in with a trap. This is a great play, but it unfortunately backfires and the player just psychos on him for our 50-50. Why did you do that? Luckily, Jacob manages to clean up the kill, but it was a close one. Since he carries a ton of heals into the mid and end game, like everyone should, he's able to quickly heal up, so it is all peace, all love. He's back in the game. Now that everything is sorted out, he hops out of his base to scope the area out. The only current fight is way above him, and it's not a safe one to take, as there are multiple other players on the islands who will third party if they're given the chance and he'd be pushing upwards, risking getting lasered or shot, or who knows. Overall, as much of a W keyer as Jacob is in these cups, even he knows that fights like these, where you start at a disadvantage and continue with a giant risk, are just not worth taking. Instead, he stays low and hangs out until the next zone comes in. This is an important lesson in dropping ego. Think about the big picture, don't get caught up in these little scuffles. The next zone comes in, and with his insane loot, materials, and a pretty close zone, he's probably in the best spot out of the whole lobby right now. He tunnels out using the extra materials from his kill, so he can stay covered for most of his rotation to the next zone. If you ever have extra materials from a kill, or just some extra you farmed, it is a great idea to build a base or a tunnel using those materials so they don't go to waste. And you can benefit from them even if they don't fit into your inventory. Also, take a look at this snipe. There's not too much to learn from it, but it's just a pretty saucy snipe. Oh, saucy. However, we can see that he doesn't start spraying or W King just because he hit a shot. The player is far and he's boxed up, so there's no real benefit in spraying him. 
Now this is a situation some of us are unfortunately far too familiar with. The zone pulls super far and it's across water. Even with max materials, floppers, and shields, some of us wouldn't make it. Let's see how Jacob does it. While this is a tough situation and the only way you can get across is by taking a risk, there is only one way to somewhat improve your chance of survival, and that is to go early. If you go early, other players behind you will rarely shoot, as they know you can hold them in the storm, and the people in front will be so focused on their rotation and trying to survive that they'll generally avoid shooting you as well. Alongside this, any time you open an edit to focus someone, there is a chance that you get hit hard and sprayed as well, which is something no one wants to happen. Overall, the safest play is just go, do it! A few not so smart players decide to shoot at him, so he does a low material tunnel to block them off and avoid being hit, which works like a charm. The main reason for this is because it's a lower point lobby, and the players in these lobbies aren't generally as strong in terms of game sense, but in most higher point lobbies, this strat will almost always work like a charm. He makes it to the other side untouched and simply rotates in the open. Since everyone is so focused on getting in, he can also do the same and not worry about tunneling to get in, since the odds of getting shot are simply too low. And even if some psycho does shoot at him, he's got floppers and minis and can easily get back up on health. Especially in this low mobility meta, pickaxe swinging is a huge deal and rotating in the open is more viable than ever, even in the later stages of the game, as Jacob shows in this match. Also, see that player all the way back in the back of the zone? Yeah, yeah, you see that guy? That's the guy who shot at Jacob earlier on. So guess what? We got some beef. And that is why you don't shoot at players rotating early because they will happily hold you in zone and you'll be in a worse position. Instead for him, it would be better to have followed Jacob with a few seconds worth of a gap between them without shooting. That way they both get across and don't get shot at. At this point, Jacob takes the opportunity to walk on into the zone untouched and also manages to grab the loot of a player who just got eliminated. From this other player's loot, he gets a harpoon gun, which he uses to harpoon some more loot from a player who died in the storm. This harpoon strat is amazing and it'll definitely prove useful if you ever eliminate someone far away or find a loot pile in late game that's a distance away. Some pros even carry harpoons and fishing rods into the end game just in case. Oh, but wait a minute, I got a harpoon, let's go. The zone pulls back onto Jacob's side, so he's able to simply build in with little risk. And he uses a lot of material at first, since he thinks he is more behind. Unfortunately, he didn't, but mistakes happen. Guys, this is another important lesson in life. You will stop making mistakes once you're dead, okay? To do anything, you gotta try. And when you try, sometimes you fail. But don't get down, just stay up, keep going and keep going beast mode, okay? You're good. All right, now let's get back to the fluffiness. He continues into the zone with a low material tunnel, making his way as far up as possible and looking back to shoot players rotating in. He gets two textbook kills on rotating players by doing this. He tanked a bit of storm to grab loot since he had floppers, so he simply pops one when he gets back in and he's back up to full health. From here, Jacob spots a player inside the zone and decides to head back to grab a nice angle. Since he has floppers, he has a lot more opportunity to move around and make plays super late into the game, and he hits this player a crazy amount and quickly picks up the kill. Jacob starts a fight with one of the final two players and goes down after lasering the other one as well. From this point, most fights are just situational. The high ground player eliminates the second opponent with an RPG shot, so it's now a 1v1 and Jacob has to clutch this up to get the 21 point win. At this point, there isn't too much to say, as almost every 1v1 is different. In this case, he plays patient and uses his materials to cover himself from the RPG shots, then holds the player in zone and gets the easy W with his insane aim. To the face, my friends, let's go! The W, ah ha ha! I didn't even get the W, but it feels good! Now that we've gone over this game, let's discuss a few of the key points so we all get a better idea of what we can take away from this. The first key point is his usage of aim assist. We're not here to argue about it, whether it's OP or not, but Jacob sure uses it well, using his legacy settings to set up easy shots and get lasers on his opponents. If you're on controller, be sure to use your aim assist to its maximum potential. Depending on which setting you use it can be super easy or difficult to do, but it's important to use the tools you've got available. Second, when starting fights, 
Jacob almost always scares his opponent by making a power play right at the start. Like cranking hard for height where most people would box up, hitting an insane laser, or anything in between. Establishing dominance over the fight early and making your opponent scared will give you a giant advantage even against the best of players. Due to the recent buffs to upgrade benches, they're literally insane. If you're not including them in your loot route, then you honestly are crazy, bro. It only costs 100 to upgrade from green to blue and 150 from blue to purple. So if you find yourself with a bit of extra time early in the game and you want to make your loot a lot better, then please use an upgrade bench. Jacob uses these almost every game and we think they are one of the main reasons he has dominated so much in this cup. Next up, a bit of a shorter one, finding locations with extra meta tools like the coolers in the main building of Weeping Woods, which give Jacob two Slurpfish off the spawn in this particular game. This is super important and these can really give you an edge in not only early game, but even moving into mid and end game if you manage to hold on to these items. Jacob also pushes very intelligently and knows when to back off. We saw at the middle island, he avoided pushing the fight up top due to his lack of full shield, the fact that they were way above, and the prevalence of third parties on the island with them. Being smart about what fights you take and analyzing each mid-game fight before you start will prove to be super beneficial. Moving into the later stages of the game, if you've ever got extra materials from a kill or loot pile like Jacob did in this game, setting up a base or tunnel using those materials is an easy way to make use of them. In the later zones, it is pretty much unavoidable that you will get shot at, at least a few times. That's why it is crucial to carry healing items, so you can quickly get back up to speed. In this game, Jacob carried floppers and mini shields to top off his health whenever he needed to. It's almost impossible to completely avoid getting hit, so this is the other option and probably the best option overall. Get some healing in your life. Man, that bandage feels pretty good. Big tip right here. If you have to rotate across water, it is good to go early. The people behind won't shoot, so don't you hold them in the storm. And the people up ahead will avoid shooting so they don't get focused and so they can make their own rotation. If anyone does shoot, they're just taking a huge risk and it probably will backfire on them. Another rotation tip, it is typically a good idea to rotate without building whenever possible so you can avoid wasting materials. If most or at least a lot of players are rotating at the same time, then there's no good reason for them to shoot one another. However, it's important to always keep your guard up as you never know when someone might not be so smart. That guy who's shooting at you probably didn't watch this pro guides video. So take some comfort knowing that you are making a pro play by having some peace and not just shooting back when we are rotating. Come on, get your head in the game. Moving on to the latest stages of the game, specifically in the 6th and 7th zones, it is typically a good idea to get far ahead with a low material tunnel and then begin looking back for kills on players who fall behind. You can score some kills using this strategy pretty often, just like Jacob did in this game, where he got two quick kills in only a few seconds. And seriously, I blinked, uh, and then two kills, what? Jacob, your fluffiness is out of control. Finally, in the final zones, if you ever need to grab another angle on someone, Take a few seconds to get away from the fight, change your rotation path, or anything else. It's crucial to carry floppers as they grant you 50 health in only one second of use. Definitely consider carrying floppers into the end game if you have the opportunity. Overall, we really think Wavy Jacob is one of the most underrated players, and we feel like he'll definitely end up becoming one of those big name controller players like Unknown, who dominates in cups almost every time. By taking the tricks from this video, you'll see yourself dominating solos in no time. Remember that these strategies take practice to learn. We recommend writing them down on a notepad or something else that you can write on, maybe your baby sister's forehead, or maybe just use a notepad. Keep that notepad by you so you can remember the different strategies to use throughout the game, and then they will eventually come natural to you. Thank you all so much for watching this video. We really hope it helped you out. Head into your next Cash Cup arena game or scrim game, super confident knowing that the controller legend Fluffy Dolphin, oh, he's so fluffy, he's by your side, and that you have learned some of the best tricks to dominate solo tournaments. If you enjoyed this video, we'd appreciate it a bunch if you could drop a like, subscribe, and maybe even share the video with a few friends as well. Remember to tell us in the comments what you'd like to see next on the channel. We read all your comments and we'll consider every idea. Also, be sure to check out ProGuides.com for some amazing exclusive content that you will not find anywhere else. Once again, it's been your host, Cody. You can follow me on Instagram at Coco Meddler. Are you loco for the Coco? Let me know. And one last thing. 
YOLO. Don't forget YOLO. You only got one life, my friends, okay? So go for your dreams. Keep going. Keep pushing. W key life. Let's get it. Let's get that win. I'll see you guys later. Peace.